Yep, you read that title right. Just a few days ago, I went to a Donald Trump rally out of pure interest and curiosity. What are his supporters like? What's the energy? Is he really that orange in real life? These are all of my burning questions that I've had a strong desire to answer. So I figured I'd just go find out myself. Anyways, let's get to the story. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. I fired a lot of people. In fact, people said I fired so many people. When somebody's bad, you gotta fire them. But when this man was born, God broke the mold. And you cannot have President Trump policies without President Trump. Let's go, President! 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 Let's
I must say though, it is really nice to see people so passionate about America, but I did also get the vibe that some of these people were more into the cult of Trump and supporting Trump than actual America itself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. New Hampshire, this is a great honor to be with you tonight. We've got plenty of time. Since 2016, you and I have been in this battle side by side, taking on the entire corrupt system in Washington like no one else has ever done before. Nobody else has done what we've done. The Washington Swamp has done everything in its power to take away your voice. But this Tuesday, it is finally going to turn you away. Your voice is going to be given back. You had a voice just three years ago. I'll be with you. Yeah, we just got back from Iowa. It was cold. 40 degrees below zero. Would you say that's cold? That makes this look like a warm place, right? That's right. You know, with a party of common sense. You know that, right? With a party of common sense. Instead of wasting hundreds of millions of dollars attacking Trump, we need to come together and focus all of our energy and resources on defeating crooked Joe Biden. We have to do it. We have to get him out. He is a threat to democracy. He really is. He's a threat to democracy. You know why he's a threat to democracy, right? A couple of reasons. But you know the first reason? He's grossly incompetent. So we'll end up in a world war because of this guy. The bombs roar. Look at the Middle East now again. Here we go again. You know how he's running the war? Laptop from his stomach laying in a hospital bed. Can't do that. Same people that gave us Afghanistan, that removal, the worst removal, the worst, I think the most embarrassing event in the history of our country. Those are the people that are running these wars. Nobody ever gets fired. I fired a lot of people. In fact, people said I fired so many people. When somebody's bad, you gotta fire them. So after spending about 20 minutes bashing Joe Biden, it then turned to bashing Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. It's not gonna happen with us. 10 years before you collect one penny of benefits, you've worked your entire life. You can't do that to people. DeSantis voted three times to raise the retirement age very substantially on Social Security. He voted when he was a congressman. From South Carolina, Governor Henry McMaster, one of the best governors in the country. Come on up, Henry. We'll be there in three weeks. So we're going to be there in three weeks. So you know what I'm doing? I'm kissing S. I'm kissing. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evans. She's fantastic. Pamela. Attorney General Alan Wilson. Just won a very big case, by the way. Big case, Alan. South Carolina House Speaker Merle Smith. Love that name. South Carolina Treasurer, Curtis Loftus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Curtis. Congressman Joe Wilson. Do you remember Joe Wilson? Are we coming out for Trump on Tuesday or what? Are we going to take 10, 15 people to the voting votes with us? Are we going to do that? Yes! We need to do that because we have an open border. I'm here today not just because I'm the Lieutenant Governor of South Carolina, because I have believed in President Trump since 2015. But when this man was born, God broke the mold. And you cannot have President Trump policies without President Trump. Thank you so much, New Hampshire. Let's close this on Tuesday. 
Okay, so this was a really interesting part of the rally. Trump literally read the audience a story, like a storybook, and full-blown adults were pretty much crying by the end of it. It was very bizarre, but I'm gonna show the clip now. Really weird. At the border, this was an old song that I revised a lot for purposes of saving our country, frankly. And it has to do with the border. Think of it as the border. Think of it as the people that we're letting in because they're coming in from jails and prisons. They're coming in from mental institutions, insane asylums. They're emptying out into the United States. We're like a dumping ground. Terrorists are coming into our country. And I think this is very emblematic of what's happening. Sad, sad. People love it, but it's sad. But it gives you what is going on. On her way to work one morning, down the path, along the lake. And then there was a lone Biden supporter in the crowd that decided to get really obnoxious in the middle of Trump's speech. And he pretty much got beat up by everyone else on the floor and the police had to intervene immediately. Serious, so now we know we're getting serious. Now, he's just a disturbed person. Remember that used to happen all the time. People used to call for it. Where is that? We want it back. But now, probably we're we're really now into political season, and that is happening. It's happening. This week, 17 retired military officials stated that Biden's electric vehicle lunacy is a threat to national security is. And by the way, they don't work well in cold weather. And they don't go far. That's true. That's true. They don't go far. That's true. <laughs> but it's certainly not uh, great for your climb. Your climb. They call it climate. So in conclusion, who the hell wants this to end? I don't want it to end. I had a friend, you know, he wanted to become a politician. He's a very successful guy, one of the most successful people. I don't want to get him embarrassed, but, and he wants to be a politician. I said, what's the problem? Why don't you do it? Just go ahead and do it. You'd be good. You had a lot of money. You'd done that. He said, I have one problem. What? He has stage fright. I said, stage fright. That doesn't sound good. If you have stage fright, I told him, if you have stage fright, this is the wrong business for you. But we feel comfortable together, right? You know? Be much love. Together we're taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. We've never seen anything like it. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we are fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. This nation belongs to you. This is your home, this is your heritage, and our American liberty is your God-given right. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the ocean, settled a continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the greatest skyscrapers in the world, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. And after speaking for nearly two hours, the rally was over and we had to walk outside. But this is when things kind of got a little interesting. Look at them. I think he's gonna be a great candidate. He's the best candidate for now. I don't see any any other person that is like that can bring what uh, the U.S. needs. Um, hopefully, you find someone that is right in the middle, not like not too crazy, not too like 
slow and uh yeah i like, didn't appreciate how he started out with so much hate at the beginning but i wonder if that's every single political rally so i guess we'll be able to see when we go to the joe biden rally if that one starts out the same way which in my opinion sleepy joe i would think is going to start it off like that and probably never say anything else so we'll see but overall it was pretty good it was entertaining we saw a person get thrown out <laughs> and i would rate the experience like a good 10 out of 10 american experience <laughs> my first one joe's first one yeah. as an american mm. and it was pretty great now we're just walking in the car really cold but the place was packed it was a packed stadium that's for sure that's for sure what is that 10 10 degrees now yeah 10 degrees and like 9 p.m he spoke for like two hours which yeah. was way more than two i thought hours. i thought he, it was be like gonna be like 30, 30 minutes i must say he's cognitively there but he <laughs> is like i thought he was gonna be a little slow and oh he's not that orange yeah like just the camera makes the camera him orange. makes him look orange in real life he is not that orange no i don't know you see that, that was so, really weird. so weird yeah i think it's it's like um reflection maybe? yeah i don't know <laughs> but no that's uh you put your hand back in your pocket that's it that's the thoughts and thanks and that's it we'll update you at the joe biden rally